couple of months ago, I read a tweet that goes, we know what you're good at. The question is, what are you good for? You're graduating. You graduated. You had honors. You were invited to speak exactly 10 years after your own high school graduation. You're good, pretty much. But, but what does it really matter? That is the question I hope we will all begin to answer, especially as you step foot outside of these covered courts. There was another tweet I read just a couple of days ago. It said that the vast majority of people that you look up to are remarkably unremarkable. Your idols, your bosses, the people standing in front of you right now, we're all vastly unremarkable. Sometimes it's because we recognize that even supposed good people do bad things. Other times, it's simply because we remember that we're all just human. We all have flaws. We all have shortcomings. We all make mistakes and have weaknesses. That can be disenchanting to know that the person speaking in front of you right now was called to the guidance office in her freshman year because all of my teachers were complaining about me. Because I was irresponsible, because I wasn't submitting my reply slips, and because to them I was underachieving. It's disenchanting. But it's a good opportunity to remember that if people, ordinary people like myself, can make it to the Forbes 30 under 30 list, a list I made it to exactly a year ago, then so can everyone in this room. That's the border, the wall I hope to shatter as I stand in front of you right now. That anyone can be here, and more importantly, anyone can do the long list of things I've done. But, once again, there's a but. There's a difference. Anyone can make it big. Anyone can change their communities, can change the country. But not everyone is able to do so. Why? What spells the difference? And I need everyone here to listen because this isn't fluff. This is true. What I've learned is that there are three things that spell the difference between remarkability and impact and everything else that passes by. Three things I hope you would start to also execute and live by as you finish this graduation. It's to act, it's to care, to act, and to adapt. Remarkability isn't found in how good you are. It's not found in what you're good at. It's found in how goodness multiplies through what you do in what you're good for. To act. My life motto has always been tiwala lang. Everything, whether it's down big in a badminton game, or if I fail long tests, or you know, did something like wear the wrong shoes to a high school graduation. Tiwala lang. Things will always still work themselves out. And for the most part, this was always how my world's been, with things working themselves out for me. It was a kind, benevolent, and generous world. A world that was shattered into pieces in 2015. That December, I first visited our marginalized communities in the floodway. It was there where I saw how crippling poverty truly is. We're all Filipinos. We see poverty every day. We see it by our cars, 
We see it alongside Katipunan. But I saw it in the face of Aling Dolor, who I was with the whole afternoon. When we came back to her house, I saw that there were no appliances, not even a light bulb. Because despite having a job, she still couldn't find a way to pay for electricity bills over the past 10 months. It was a world where people thought not of prom dresses or of what college they wanted to go get into. It was where they thought of how they were going to get food to the table for that day. I still remember what I thought about after coming home that day. I said it was too easy. Too easy for me to go back and forth to and from my world and the communities where the people I was with were still there in theirs. And I knew that the only reason I could do that was because I was born in a particular way, in a particular life, and they weren't. We're all here today, yes, because of our hard work, but also because we were born in a particular way. We were lucky. But a lot of people aren't. And I felt as if that wasn't right. That it isn't right that if I had the permission to dream of getting into Ateneo, of winning a UAAP championship, then other people can't do it. I felt as if it wasn't right that people should be deprived of access to their basic needs, to decent opportunities, and to the ability to create the life they want simply because of how and where they were born. And that night, I made one promise to myself. I promised I wasn't going to leave the communities, not until they can too. For the first time in my life, I made a promise, a dream, not just for myself, but for everyone else. I cared. And then I acted. I was a management of applied chemistry student, so I did chemistry business. So good job on the polarity reference. I designed electricity generating water filtration bikes to provide communities with electricity and water for free. By 2020, when the COVID pandemic hit, my family and I started the One Kainta Food Program to provide food to 1,000 people every day. As Mam Roman said, today we've distributed over 5.5 million food hampers across 20 cities and 11 hospitals in the Philippines. And we continue to operate today. When you act founded and grounded on a deep care for that which is greater than yourself, marvelous things can happen, and you might not even know it. But at the same time, when you care, you don't just stop at the first instance of doing good. You continue, and you adapt. By 2020, I understood that not everyone will continue to donate. People get tired. But I was stubborn. I knew that even as the pandemic receded, hunger won't go away. And so I wanted to see how we can continue what we were doing. By the end of that year, we had a maximum ground capacity of 50,000 distributed packs in a day. We're that fast. And so I leveraged on this brevity to re-partner with our partner companies and restaurants and say, give me your overstock produce, your near expiry products, and I promise you, I will have them consumed before they even hit the date. We were able to benefit our partner companies and restaurants and ensure a steady supply of food to our communities. Still, beyond food, I wanted to see what else we can do. Through food, we help people get by. As I always say, gusto namin kayong maturung, matulungang makaraos. Pero, Gusto rin namin kayong makitang makaahon. And so we started our education and livelihood programs, a key partner of which is MC. Still, deeper poverty traps remain embedded across Philippine society. And I knew that my work must likewise entail systemic change. Providing social welfare 
although it's one of my favorite things to do, is not enough. The very systems influencing the rights, capabilities, and conditions people are subject to must be refined and made more just, equitable, and livable. And so I got into sustainability because I felt as if it was a good framework to make systems more equitable in terms of the environment, the society, and even prosperity. For this, I co-founded Sustainable PH and Sustainable Rumble. We raise and create more and more sustainability leaders through what we do. And I work as a sustainability consultant, advising big organizations and companies on their sustainability strategies. It's a long list, as you heard, and it's something that might seem a bit too far-fetched to create. But it all just started because I cared I acted, and out of a deep desire to continue acting, I adapted. Fortunately, this heart to care and the audacity, the literal audacity to do something about it is something that MC taught me, and I'm sure taught all of you as well. If there's one thing my 12 years in MC inculcated in me, it's the fact that we, even and especially as women, can do not only great, but important, beneficial, and impactful things. I might get canceled for this, but stereotypically, women do tend to care more. And as you know, Caring for that which is greater than yourself is always the first step towards accomplishing something greater than yourself. And then we act. When there was no man to reach above the cabinets or open the projector attached to the ceiling, we did it ourselves. I saw classmates who weren't as tall as me go up chairs in order to turn that projector on. When issues arose in society, we spoke and debated about them inside and outside the classroom, or in your case, the Zoom room. Talking about solutions and problems and ideas as if we were at the forefront of the decision-making process. When there were no tables to eat at at lunch, and let's admit that there never really is a table to eat at during lunch, we made do and ate on the floor. MC taught and showed us that when push comes to shove and something needs to be done, we can be the people who would do something and find a way. I know you're all just graduating from high school, but I know so many young leaders who founded foundations, who've changed their communities before they even hit college. I started BMB when I was in college. Anyone can do something right now. All we have to do is start and act. Competence with a soul. That is one of the taglines MC had while I was here. And it's a stark reminder of what kind of woman and leader I want to be. And it's a call for all of you to likewise emulate and live up to. And now this is an address to everyone in this hall, students and parents and administrators alike. I know the Philippines isn't in its best shape right now. And I understand if it's much easier to be apathetic to look at me standing in front of you and say, well, let her do her work, but that's not what's real anyway. But I implore you to remember that when things aren't working, you don't jump ship and abandon it. You change it. When I was in my junior year of high school, once again, I got sent to the guidance office for giving away prom dates. Today, I give away food and I get awards for it. 
Apparently, I just had to rechannel my generosity into something else. All jokes aside, the point is that when things aren't working, you don't leave. You take it as a signal to care more and to act based on that care. Because, and I've seen this, things can always change. No matter how bad, corrupt, or terrible this country might seem, bad only remains in power until good comes in and shows that things can get better. And we can always be the good that shows people what's better. Because whether you go into medicine or law, entrepreneurship, accounting, marketing, or philosophy, you can always do and create what's better. Seven years ago, I visited our floodway communities. And although doing so has shown me the harsh realities of life, it also gave me more hope than ever before. More than just showing me what should be done in this world. It made me see how much more there can be done. And so my motto remains, tiwala lang, just trust. But it's a trust that is no longer founded in a mere childlike expectation of good things to come simply because they always have. But it's a trust rooted in something inside all of us. A trust that makes us believe that better things can come despite seeing the worst that already has. Because we can go out there and make it better. We can do something about it. Seven years ago, I made a promise not to leave the communities until the people there can too. I cared, I acted, and today my promise has changed. It's adapted. Today, my promise is to do everything in my power to ensure that the people there and Filipinos everywhere would no longer have to live in the first place. Because the country, the community, in and by itself is already better. That's my dream. It may not be yours, but I invite you as you enter college, to dream your dream. Now is not the time to be perfect. It's the time to go out, to explore your own floodways, and to understand and see for yourselves what your unique medicines and gifts are. We all have medicines and gifts to share to this world. Now is the time to explore them, to see what can be done. So dream. Always dream. Dream your dream. Dream crazily. Whoever really thought that I'd create electricity generating water filtration bikes, I never really understood how batteries worked. But dream crazily. But always dream with a purpose. Dream your dream, but dream for a better Philippines. Dream a better Philippines. One that we envision not just for ourselves, but for our families, our friends, for all those who dream with us, and for all those who can't. Dream and wake up every morning trying to work for that dream. Trust me when I say that to live in love and in love of others not only pays, as my story shows, but it's also the only way to truly live, as MC all taught us. We now live in difficult times, in critical times. It is no longer enough to dream solely for ourselves. And all the more is it no longer enough to live only for ourselves. So dream encompassingly and live always for that which is greater than yourself. Don't ask yourself 
the moment you step into college, what you can get from an MC, an Athenian, a Lasallian, a UP education. Ask not what you can get. Ask what you can give. Trust me, you'll grow and achieve so much more if you do that. And so, class of 2023, you're all remarkable, but we're all just human. So the truth of the matter is, we're all vastly unremarkable. We're normal. But because we can care, because we can act, because we can adapt, we can do remarkable things. Your graduation is one of them, but it won't be the only one. Don't let it be the only one. Always ask yourself, not what you're good at and not what you want to be good at. Ask yourself, what do I want to be good for? What do I need to be good for? That is the secret. That is what spells the difference between remarkability and everything else. And if it matters to you, that's how you get into Forbes Under 30. Class of 2023, go and be the good that makes the Philippines better. If we can do it, if we can contribute it, Trust me when I say, so can you. Congratulations, MCHS Batch of 2023.